Good afternoon and welcome back to live streaming coverage of the Goldline U.S. Open Contender. My name is Jerry Gertz of CurlingZone.com. I'd like to welcome you inside the Four Seasons Curling Club in Blaine, Minnesota. This is the championship final game for the men's division. We've got Corey Dropkin of Duluth, Minnesota, taking on Rich Ruin and squad from right here in the Twin Cities. Opening matchup here, uh, sorry, for the first final for uh, the season. The uh, Gold Line U.S. Open contender was uh, put together as a, a event to allow the teams to get their feet wet, get back on the ice. Obviously, we're still in the middle of a pretty significant pandemic right now. And you can see from the curlers on the ice, they are fully masked. They are working on trying to maintain social distancing on the ice as much as possible. Uh, one sweeper on the rock for the majority of the time, but the second sweeper is in play, helping with judging weight, timing rocks, still getting involved. So uh, when you look at uh, you know the difference between uh, the, the club rules that you're seeing implemented and a lot of the return to play guidelines and uh, the play of these teams is that... Uh, the majority of these teams end up being like family units. It's their pod. So, you know, you see a little bit less about, uh, you know, spacing. So you see the teams and players get more interactive out there. You know, of course, you know, we need to try and continue to minimize risk as much as possible. Most places don't mandate mass indoors, yet uh, facilities like Four Seasons do implement it uh, uh, just as a safe, extra safety precaution. Um, indoors for sport is certainly uh, a debate around whether wearing it is a thing or not. Though I know a number of the athletes have been training. Corey Dropkin talked about uh, that in his interview earlier uh, with me about uh, looking forward to the event and his preparations ahead of time. He'd been wearing the mask in the gym while training and sweating like a... a, a, a whatever... Um, in it and he says it's definitely something you get you got to get used to and uh, so it's an adjustment it's an adjustment for all the teams out here right now and uh, but you know what you're lucky to have some curling on the ice and uh, the opportunity for everyone here at home to watch along as well so just as I get a couple more things set up share this around the internet I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in, but it'd be a great help if you guys could share this on your uh, Facebook feed. Let everyone know you're watching live curling. This is the first North American event uh, of the men's tour since uh, the pandemic closed down the sporting world and, and, and essentially everything else in March. So excited to be back on the ice here, and uh, we've got a good one. 14th ranked Corey Dropkin. Taking on 15th ranked Rich Ruinen, two teams in the top 15. And of course, the uh, World Curling Federation World Team Rankings, the official rankings for the uh, sport of curling. So just getting going here in the first end. Fairly open end here. Both teams just trying to get a feel for the ice. This is the first game for uh, Team Dropkin on Cheat C here at the Four Seasons Curling Club. Rich Ruinen played their A qualifier game here on Saturday morning.
Team Dropkin is three this weekend. Joe Polo at third with uh, Mark Fenner. Lead second. Essentially the uh, two front end players will play three stones each. And then Corey will throw the last two as the skip here. New third, Andrew Stopera replaces Greg Persinger this season. Just going to peel that stone out. Just getting started here in the first end. What I mean, just started by the game. We're getting down to skip stones now. Last of the third stones here from Joe Polo. Dropkin with hammer here in the first end. When uh, getting started, that draw to the button is then used to uh, determine uh, who will start with hammer. Typically, uh, as both these teams were undefeated coming into the final, they were essentially, you know, considered tied. After the nose hit on the, uh, or sorry, after the uh, corner guard goes up, gonna see Ruin and change gears here. They're gonna try and use that rock as they uh, guard themselves and try and get the force here. They go a little bit too deep. He really wanted to be in front of the T line there. So now for Team Dropkin uh, advantage here. Looks like, though, that he's going to play some weight at this. Just wants to hit it and roll out into the open. Corey Dropkin, his first of two skip stones here in the first end. Mark Fenner trying to get this over. Catches enough of the yellow. The shooter will hold in the back of the 12-foot. Great shot there out of Dropkin. So now Ruin is sort of forced away from that corner guard, has to hit the open stone. No, uh, not worth taking that risk here right now. And uh, then you'll see Dropkin have a shot to blank here.
Ruinen with the nose hit here. Just wants to stay, make this a little bit more difficult on uh, Corey Dropkin to make the blank. This is the championship final of the Gold Line, U.S. Open contender. We're playing in the Four Seasons Curling Club in Blaine, Minnesota. Corey Dropkin, last stone here in the first end. Looking for the blank attempt here. Wants to hit half a stone, roll this shooter out of play. And carry the hammer into the second end. Shot is made. And we'll head to the second end here at the Gold Line U.S. Open contender. We'll be right back. And we're back here, second end now. Blank in the first end. Now we're gonna see the first rock go up in front of the rings. This was the attempt at least. Looks like they were trying to hold that off in front. So sliding in the rings, chance here, Corey Dropkin's gonna hit this, He's gonna try and roll to the wing. Mark Fenner throwing the first three stones here for Team Dropkin. We have Croy Nurnberger throwing lead stones for Team Ruinen. Croy joined the team last year as fifth, and uh, they rotate him into the lineup a little more than most teams use their fifth players. During Nationals, uh, Croy got some action as well.
another open end here. Team's just seeming to get a feel for the ice yet still. Colin Huffman at second, hits and rolls to the side there. Again, Corey doesn't mind that red or that yellow stone over on the side. He's looking for a nose hit. Would love to just roll a little bit to the outside. Corner freeze on that yellow. And possibly have a chance to, uh, you know, maybe generate a, a two here by getting a mistake or a jam of some sort. Looking for just the outside hit, just a little bit on the outside, but they're really going on this, and this is going to cross the face. Rolls all the way to the button. So missed opportunity there for uh, Dropkin, because now what's going to happen is these two stones are separated quite a bit from each other, and a hit here, a potential roll further to the outside, and now the force is on. Andrew Stopera, third stones, new to this team this year. And a really nice control weight roll there. House is fully split. So now for Dropkin, you know, he's got to try and figure out how to get these two stones a little bit closer together and maybe potentially find a way to get a blank here later on in the end. Got to try and set up a double here somehow. Looking for a little bit more of an inside roll there. Does make the hit. Anders to Paris turn here now. Wants to hit and stay. Keep this force alive. Looks like that may have just rolled just a hair too far. Looks like only one yellow in the rings now. So for Dropkin, this is going to lead to uh, a blank here. Just a heads up, Hammer has switched. Dropkin still does have Hammer in this end. Just the display is off right now. Polo with the shot. Just stays in the rings there. It is going to force Ruinen to make a play at this. Ruin in his forced his first here in the second end. Makes the hit on the outside, just stays on the edge there.
Sorry, folks, just some technical issues there with the microphone. We're back with the original. That should take that echo out of your ears. Appreciate the feedback from some of our viewers for helping us out here. Really just an open end here into skip stones. Looks like another blank coming up here. Dropkin does have the hammer, even though the graphic has flipped it to ruinin. for another hit and stay on the outside there this one looking like it's going to drift a little bit that is going to roll out of play and Corey Dropkin will throw this through for a blank end here in the second he wants to hold the hammer with his next end the assumption is you can score one with your last shot so you might as well try and use it that last shot to get more than one so kick the can down the road here Head on to the third end and give it another try. Through it goes. We're heading to the third end, still tied at zero. Dropkin will continue with the hammer. Back here, third end, again with the center guard up here to start. Dropkin is playing around it here. We'll see how aggressive Ruinen chooses to be in this end. For Dropkin, there's really no reason to uh, bring a whole lot of aggression and be too aggressive here. You've got the hammer, you're in control, you've got the advantage in the game. So by just keeping that middle open, Controlling the play gives them gives themselves a chance to get two with a low risk end if possible. So the first rock here from Mark Fenner, looking to be just biting the top of the forefoot. And with that, uh, Runen's going to call the, the draw, the outturn draw around here. They want to get down to that shot stone.
Things getting a little bit more interesting here with the positioning of the stones around the center guard. Both teams shuffling rocks around the forefoot there. Dropkin does have hammer here still. That hammer marker does uh, is out of place right now. Joe Polo, his first here. Polo throws uh, the middle three stones. Mark Fenner throws the first three. And then Corey Dropkin follows up with the last two as a three-man squad here. Wanted to get that a little bit more to the inside. Try and kick that yellow under. Dropkin sitting shot now in the forefoot. They are going to draw open side here. Try and sit shot on the T-line. No real great options for uh, Dropkin in the middle. So uh, ignoring those stones and drawing a second stone over here, he does lie too now. And so it adds the, the pressure for Team Ruinen. This run back isn't so uh, risk-free anymore. So he definitely has to play it with a little less weight just to try and make sure that they keep that shooter around. They 
really love to get it just a hair off on the inside and try and kick both the shooter and the rock. They run back a little bit to the inside here. Really got to go on this. It's just going to cross the face. Shooter does roll inside. They do make the run back. But it opens the door here for Joe Polo. The hit and roll is makeable. And if he's able to get underneath there, those two yellow stones, top of the house, are locked. So it's going to be real hard for uh, Ruinen to be able to remove that shot. Mark Fenner on the brush here, looking to hold this. The roll underneath just peeks out the other side. The key is when these opportunities present themselves, you got to capitalize. And now it's Ruinen's turn. Just get to the inside, roll under, right on top of the button, under those two staggered frozen stones, top of the 12 foot. To hit the roll again. Really got to go on this. Colin Huffman trying to hold the line here. Just rolls a little bit too far. Both teams just over curling a little bit in that spot. Dropkin on the uh, left hand side, Runin on the right. So after that roll through, Corey dropped in looking to draw around those center guards now. His lying shot still in the back of the rings. Wants to put this just top four around those guards. Calling out top four weight there. Lines is looking real good too. Just gets around. 
Finishes in the top of the forefoot. Great draw weight there from Corey Dropkin. Looks like all that Rich Ruin is left with is a play on the back stone. Gotta just get rid of this. You can't give up three here. So you're sort of sacrificing this, taking your medicine, make the hit, and uh, you know if you can roll to the inside a little bit, you might take this draw a little harder. Throwing some weight at this. Looking to get a little inside roll underneath. Would have just shrunk the circles a little bit. Made this draw a little bit tougher. Dropped and he just threw this draw. May as well just throw it again. You know the line, you know the path. And just repeat the throw. Last stone here, the third end. Corey Dropkin needs a piece of the forefoot to score his two. Put the first points on the board and take that early lead. This rock just looks like it's way out there. A bit of a guess on the weight. And looks like he's about two, three feet heavy. That would have been real close had it finished on the tee line. Unfortunately, Team Dropkin just settles for a single point here. They'll lead one to nothing as we head to the fourth end. Team Dropkin, sorry, Team Ruinen gets their first chance with the hammer here. We're led off here by Mark Fenner, throwing first stone here, fourth end. After blanks in the first and the second end, we have a score now in the third. Coming home fourth end here, Team Ruin in with Hammer. throw up the corner guard it looks like we'll have an end here with both teams looking to play a little bit aggressive
So with that corner guard going up, Team Dropkin's going to keep the foot on the gas here, and they're going to throw up a second center guard. And now it'll be interesting to see what Ruinen does here to respond. They want to get this as high as possible on the center line. And looks like this rock is a little heavy, sliding more than I think they're looking for. So now those two guards out front are still protected. Ronan cannot hit them. But with how tight they are, he's going to draw around here. And uh, this end is likely to still be fairly open. The straw going deep around the T-line isn't such a bad thing for the team with Hammer either. But you want to get it as far back as possible. That settles in the back 12 foot there. The Donnie B special, as they'll call it. Kevin Martin will regularly reference this, that when Don Bartlett, his former lead, would go deep around a center guard early in an end, that uh, they'd often come away with uh, a sneaky three. So it looks like Joe Polo is going to head back down to the other end. They're going to have a discussion about this. They certainly are aware of the scenario and that deep rock around the middle. For Dropkin, those two center guards are uh, not in a great spot. It's a pretty easy double peel. And if uh, Ruinen was to make that double peel, they'd likely roll their shooter for another corner. And then all of a sudden, there's rocks behind the T-line. Corner guards up, no guards in the middle, and things look really good for the Hammer team. Team Dropkin has settled on the draw here. They're going to try and follow down and around. Mark Fenner, his third stone here in the fourth end. over curls they were either playing the tap or the straight draw around it's not a bad shot there they really needed to hit more of that red one chip it further underneath and then they potentially would have lied uh, or sorry no just the draw around that's the hammer team shot no for dropkin he, he wanted to tap that on the nose or get around it not 100 percent certain of what the call was so Ruinen looking for the hit and roll underneath here. Those two now staggered Dropkin stones in the middle. Not helpful for the Dropkin team as neither of those stones can be raised up. And this hit and roll is going to roll right underneath. Team Ruinen now lying two, both buried under cover. For 
Dr. Dropkin, the only response here is continue uh, doubling down. Draw around that middle. Looking to put a rock top of the forefoot. If he shows half a stone, that's okay here. As long as he's got the angle right. Colin Huffman down there having a conversation with Rich. Trying to figure out the best shot here. Certainly have to be very careful. It does look very good, but those three red stones out front are dangerous. Looks like the call is here, trying to make the double on the top two. If you can just kick the shooter out to the side a little bit. Looks pretty good. Huffman gets a couple of the red stones out of the way. His shooter rolls out. And now they're still sitting shot under a single tight corner. And it definitely looks a lot better here for uh, Team Ruinen. That middle is open. Dropkin. Looking for that draw, this uh, around again. Put that shot in the same spot, keep that angle back onto that yellow. This thing is sailing though, a little bit too heavy. Bring this rock all the way back. Not helpful at all for the Dropkin team, unfortunately. Going deep there, there's no way they can improve that. And as the team without hammer, that uh, backing in the uh, back of the rings there is uh, really only helpful to the uh, Ruinen team.
Looks like they're asking Andrews to pair to draw to the open side here. Taking a play out of the Dropkin playbook from last end. And this rock, unfortunately, also a little bit heavy. Does slide through. Looks like it's just hanging on on the back of the rings there. Another chance for Team Dropkin at this draw. Joe Polo, another go at this. Wants to stop this in the top of the forefoot. Nice draw in there by Joe Polo, followed up by uh, Andrew Stopera. Surrounding it, his rock now right there on the top of the forefoot. For everybody watching at home, the forefoot circles is the green circle. Eight foot circle is the next one, the white one. And then the 12 foot circle is the big blue circle with that uh, little circle right in the middle called the button. Lots of discussion here. This is a bit of a dangerous end now for uh, Team uh, Dropkin. Their shot stone is in a bit of a precarious spot there. So he's going to want to try and shuffle those around a little bit. But not set up any kind of shot for Team Ruinen to try and make a double. Just had a question from one of the viewers tuning in, uh, Andrea Stepnoski. Thanks for uh, joining us, Andrea. Team Dropkin's just been three all weekend. That was the plan. I think uh, Thomas Howell is uh, away this weekend. Uh, he'd have to travel a little bit to get to uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul, and these three guys are all sort of around the cities. Dropkin and uh, Polo up in the Duluth area.
lot of discussion here around this shot. Let us know in the chat. What do you think? What should they do here? Let us know in the chat. What do you think? What should they do here? Looks like they've settled on how they're going to attack this shot. Looking like a draw to come here. Looks like they've Hopkins settled on how they're going to attack uh, this shot. shot in the game here. In the uh, fourth end, like sorry. a draw to come here. Not certain, but this may end up being a guard as well. The real challenge here is, is that uh, that red stone is uh, in a tough spot, and it is a guard after all. It does block up that uh, play on the yellow uh, up the middle. Well, it looks like Ruinen is uh, considering the straight run here. If he was to ever just hit this on the nose, the red will go straight back onto the yellow. The yellow will stuff onto the red, sit shot right there, and your shooter will actually stay right in front as a guard. with hammer here fourth end first of two looking for the straight run back wants to hit this right on the nose just crosses Still a good result for the Ruinen team here. Opens up that yellow stone. Dropkin can't really make a play at that uh, comfortably. And for Team Ruinen, that is now open for access on their end. So Ruinen's either got to throw second shot here, try and set it up somewhere where he can't uh, have a double made. If you could ever throw this, back four... In the top uh, left-hand side, as you see in the screen, in that forefoot, fully in the back there. You might be able to stay shot and and uh, make drop can have to play a shot, or ruin to have to play a shot for one. Very 
There's a guard right in the middle there behind Fenner. Very complex end here. Both teams taking their time, considering all options. Key shot here for the Dropkin team. They've absolutely got to get something into that forefoot area. Right now, Ruinen has a pretty straightforward hit through that port for two. I think Corey is just doesn't see anything in the uh, the pile over there. He's gonna make this draw on the outside, looking like they were just trying to line up the right place to be. You want to put this somewhere so that there's no double on the two reds that will remain in the forefoot. shot here for Corey Dropkin. Mark Fenner on the brush here. This rock sliding a little more than I think they were looking for. Just goes a little bit behind the the forefoot there. Unfortunately, the extra curl too uh, doesn't help. Now it looks like Ruinen can play the hit through the port. Looks like it'll naturally make the double on the two yeah, on the two reds, and stick three yellows in the rings for uh, Rich Ruinen here to take a big jump in this game. Currently the score, one nothing. Team Dropkin scoring a single in the third end. Ruinen looking for the three here. Question is, will that jam on the back? They are throwing quite a bit of weight at this. So I think they're worried it's gonna stick and maybe this is just for two. Last stone here, fourth end. Ruinen with a bullet. Makes the hit, makes the double. Leaves two yellow stones in play for Team Ruinen. They'll go up two to one now after four ends here in the gold line. U.S. Open contender round. We'll be right back after this short break.
the U.S. Open events, Contender, and Championships, and the new Mixed Doubles event are hosted and run by Cold Granite Companies. Owner, President, and 2010 Olympian John Benton has been building these events as part of a larger curling business focused on growth. John has long been coaching adults and juniors and is now sponsoring a number of emerging and established teams. Tuma, Seneca, Burr, Hebert are just a few. Cold Granite also works in facility consulting. John has been sharing his experience in opening four seasons to help other dedicated facilities get off the ground. Cold, Gan Cold Granite is totally focused on growing the game. Thanks again to John Benton, club manager here at the Four Seasons. Of course, uh, entrepreneur and builder of the game. Cameron Rittenauer and Evan Workin have been an amazing help this week uh, running the event uh, around the club. Just giving John an extra set of hands. I know John has been really busy with getting this club open from uh, all the responsibilities around uh, safety from COVID. It's been uh, great to see curling back on the ice here. This is the uh, Contender Round uh, US Open, sponsored by Goldline. Typically a uh, entry level event for uh, the B slash C Tour teams to try and get an opportunity to qualify for the US Open main event in uh, right around thanks or sorry right around New Year's Eve, uh, December January there and uh, this year it was opened up for uh, all teams to play and uh, we've got a great final here between uh, 14th ranked Corey Dropkin, his young bucks. Uh, that's the on the uh, world team rankings uh, highlighted by the World Curling Federation. And, of course, uh, Rich Runin, one spot behind Dropkin as the 15th-ranked team in the world. And the United States has a third team not far behind, John Schuster, sitting 19th. And, of course, uh, that ranking was subject to improve as Schuster did miss out on the opportunity to play at the World Championships this year. So... Uh, the U.S. program, very healthy right now. Three real strong teams competing at the top of the game. And we've got a great game here. Uh, Rich Ronan with two in the fourth end. They take a 2-1 lead here into the fifth. And now we're going to see the opposite side of the turn. Dropped in with the hammer. Both teams undefeated coming into the event or coming into the final here. Team Ruinen, 5 4 win over Kevin Tuma, U.S. Junior Nationals runner up uh, last season. Then two wins over Daryl Sobering, knocking off Sobering in the A qualifier. Sobering would later come back around and reach the playoffs again through the uh, B qualifier, I believe. Then uh, Sobering won his quarters. And unfortunately for him, their run ended with an 8-6 loss to Ruinen, who reached the final here. For Dropkin, his tournament started with a 10-5 win over Daniel Casper. 8-2 over Connor Kaufman. And then a 6-3 win over Tuma in the uh, semifinals.
This rock sliding a little deep, a little too heavy there. Tough miss here for uh, Team Ruin, and that sliding through now opens up the forefoot for uh, Team Dropkin. Joe Polo with the rock here. And for Polo, same thing. They want to keep this in front of the forefoot. Anything behind the T-line will give Ruinen the chance to come back down and uh, cut down the end. This is definitely sliding a little too heavy. Andrew Stopera here looking. This one might be able to freeze right down onto the button. Sits nicely buried under cover. Really good shot there out of Stopera. I think there is an out for Dropkin here. And get down to the nose here with a little bit of weight. We'll build a pocket. Absolutely gotta get to the nose. Sliding a little heavy, and this is going to be trouble here for Team Dropkin. A draw into that pocket, and those will be welded in tight. Stapera looking to make a play in here. This rock curling a little bit more than I think they were looking for. This is going to cross the nose of the uh, yellow on the button there just a little bit. Still real good. But those stones do have a path out of the forefoot now. And Corey Dropkin is looking for the run. Wants to run this onto the yellow one, just cross it a hair. Momentum may splash it out the other side. The yellow goes out the back. This is not good. Oh boy. Stuffs it on his own stone, rolls it to the button, and now Team Ruinen lying three on the button with a real good chance here to lock down this end. It's going to take a stick of dynamite from Team Dropkin to get out of this one.
for Rich Ruinen. Opportunity is ripe here. Wants this top four foot buried behind that long center guard. First of two stones here for Rich Ruinen. Calling heavy here. Heavy's not great. Really could open things up here for Dropkin. You really got to hit this right if you're going to bounce it. it just over curls, rubs that top one, and looks like there's a pocket there. What's it going to take for Dropkin to get into that pocket? Ronan might be okay here. That pocket right in the middle where if Dropkin could hit that with weight, it would be great. There's a center guard on that line. So there's no big weight shot here down the middle. Now they could throw some weight on the outside here on the right-hand side. Maybe get a couple of those red ones out. Or sorry, those yellow ones out. Of course, any big weight shot here, you got to watch out where those... Those red ones in the back go as well. So I think it looks like Dropkin's going to play a soft weight shot here. Wants well, just to get down there with like a backline weight. Just bump that uh, yellow stone you see and try and roll in underneath. Man, what a mess here for Team Dropkin. Attempted run back. They nut it on their own stone, spin it to the button. And now they're in a world of hurt here. Dropkin looking for the hit and roll. Dropkin's first here. Dropkin does have hammer. Just wants to move these rocks around. Give himself a chance for something. Close to the guard. This looks real good. I'll roll in. It might even be shot. Real nice stone there from Corey Dropkin. It's close. It's first or second. That yellow rock in the middle there, catching most of the button, does appear to be shot stone right now. But that red is going nowhere and can be promoted for shot right now. Lots of discussion around what to do here. Again, we always love to hear from you watching at home. What is the best option here? A 
Looks like Rich Ruin and looking at a hit off his own, trying to roll it under. for a little finesse shot here. Ruins, ruins last here, the fifth. Huffman hard on the sweep. Looking like it's going inside. Up and around, spinning. Sitting right on the pin there. Looks like Ronan sitting too. Wow, what a great shot. Now as we take a closer look at this, does Dropkin have a nose hit for three? Does that middle yellow stone rub the one out the side? If it does, it'll come clip off the back yellow. That red biting the back of the four could come into play here. Just a nose hit, even a hair to the inside with big weight. Dropkin could get out of jail here. This rock will be coming. Last stone of the fifth end. Corey Dropkin with the big shot. Looking for a two or three. The hit. The yellow spin. And it stays as two. Looks like Dropkin hit that just a hair on the high side. The shooter rolled out. But he still manages to get away with two here. Wow, what a game. That too puts Dropkin up 3-2 to two here. This is the championship final of the Gold Line U.S. Open contender. We've been streaming live from the Four Seasons Curling Club in Blaine, Minnesota. We'll be right back with the sixth end. We are back here inside the Four Seasons Curling Club in Blaine, Minnesota. Beautiful facility in uh, the city suburb of uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's about 20 minutes drive north of downtown St. Paul. 
They've got a great restaurant uh, in behind the facility attached to a hockey rink at the Fogarty Arena there. But the uh, curling club is a bit of a model for the uh, growth of curling around the Twin Cities especially, as well as a number of other locations around the country. Following up four seasons, Chaska was opened in the southwest corner of the city. A number of future developments continue to plow straight ahead with uh, the potential for the Twin Cities to become the curling capital of the world with uh, some state-of-the-art facilities and a lot of high-level competition. They are doing a lot of really cool things in the Twin Cities to try and grow the game, and that extends throughout the country in the United States. And uh, It's exciting to see uh, these two teams playing well and uh, having a great game here today, as well as a number of the young rinks that uh, have done well here this weekend. My name is Jerry Gertz of Curling Zone. I've been uh, happy to uh, bring you some expanded curling coverage this season from Curling Zone, trying to tell the stories of the game. It's been a bit of a void in the summer, trying to understand what's going on from Sarah Schuster and her story about COVID at the U.S. Club Nationals. We have a number of curling clubs that are working on trying to open up, and we've done videos and interviews with Dan Bubola in Calgary, Daryl Huff in, uh, in uh, Leduc, as well as uh, Lauren Hamblin in uh, Morris, uh, all those clubs working on getting open, uh, Leduc and Morris having done so already. And of course, a number of the athletes, uh, you know, they're looking for something to do. Uh, the players just want to play. And so it's exciting to see the opportunity in Switzerland right now with the Baden Masters and then this weekend in Adelboden. I believe Peter de Cruz knocked off Yannick Schwaller in the final there. And of course, the, the special interest story, Silvana Tiranzoni played that one, taking on the men. And Tiranzoni made it all the way to the semifinals before dropping that game to Peter de Cruz. So back here to the action. We've got double center guards up again, corner guard in play, and Team Ruinen goes around that corner. Looks like Dropkin is going to ignore the stuff on the side, continue to put the pressure in the middle. This is where Ruinen is going to want to try and counter that here, but looks like he's going to draw around that middle himself, going the other way. A lot of good can happen here with the double peel. You could get the top, the the one on the little right there, the one in the house with it. You could make the double peel in the front too. Now your corner guard is in a great position. Ideally, you'd want to keep your shooter up as a corner as well. So the hit and the double, take the one off the top 12 would be a great shot here. The draw is the call, and a well-placed draw here will uh, put Dropkin on the defensive, but this is going to overcurl. A little light out of the hands of Colin Huffman there. Again, of course, this is the first tournament of the year. Uh, first for both of these teams, first uh, competitive uh, men's or women's event uh, in North America since the COVID shutdown in March. All players are masked throughout the game. Teams are implementing a singer, single sweeper policy. The second sweeper is able to get involved. They can time, they can help judge. But they do have to uh, give space. Of course, Team Dropkin is playing with three this weekend. It was a plan by the team. Thomas Howell is away. A 
Again, looking for this wide draw around. Another rock looks like it's going to come up a little bit short. Ronan looking for the double peel here. Open that middle up. That sets up a nice line of guards on both sides. No guard in the middle anymore. And there it is. Both go away. Now for Dropkin, he wants to try and find a way to move his stone around there. Half a stone, try and roll under the guard. You gotta have pretty good weight here to move it around. Gotta go for weight here. Got to get separation or ruin and we'll have a double here. Gets the roll in, might be just enough. So a thick hit on this and I think ruin and we'll have some sort of a shot to remove both. There's going to be some weight coming on this one. Looks like a lot of ice there. Throwing a little less weight at this. I like this call. Keep this shooter around. If you're ruining, you want to have this rock on the outside here. Certainly helpful for you. I think that roll a little further than they were looking for. Dropped in looking for the double on the outside. Needs to hit the top stone first. Wants to catch it fairly thin, about a quarter or less. Hard on the sweep out of the hand. This will not hit the top one, catches the back one, but rolls out. And this will leave Rich Ruin in the chance. Roll that top stone underneath.
Andrews Tapera, his last of the sixth. Just the skip stones to come after this. This is holding a little straight. This has got some roll to it. This needs to hang on. Dropped in on the sweep. Just can't quite get it out. So ruin and lying two on the opposite edges of the sheet. And now up to Dropkin as to what to do here. They could play a hit on one of these. But should they roll out, Drop or Runin will go around the middle. Dropkin really wants to pretend, prevent the deuce here. Dropkin with the hit and roll. He's going to try and hit the outside 12 foot rock. Try and roll his shooter across the rings underneath the guards. He's got a lot of room to work with. He can do the short roll. He can do a long roll all the way across. Really, what he wants to try and do is sit uh, buried somewhere. Make it hard for Runin to remove it. This is going to roll out into the open here. Does group things a little bit closer together. If Ruinen was to roll up further to continue that way, Dropkin may have a double on his last to get out of trouble. Looking for the hit in the back. Little roll to the left will be great. Catches it on the nose. Sorry, just ahead of everyone a little bit there. With the hit, there is no double for uh, Dropkin. So he uh, will have to try and make this hit and roll underneath himself. And hopefully try and prevent Ruinen from having a shot for two here.
Last shot to come here. Rich Ruinen left with an open draw to the house here. Just needs to touch paint to score. I'll put two points on the board and give uh, Team Etichaska another lead again here in the game. Four to three. Rock looks pretty good. Colin Huffman cleaning it in. And that'll be it. That's two for Team Ruinen here. They will take a 4-3 to three lead into the seventh end here at the Gold Line U.S. Open Contender. We'll be right back after this break. We are into the seventh end here. Team Ruinen leads Team Dropkin four to three. This is the Gold Line U.S. Open contender. We are streaming from the Blaine Curling Club. Sorry, the Four Seasons Curling Club in Blaine, Minnesota. Teams have been trading deuces. Dropkin uh, held to a single point in the third end. He did have a shot for two, but uh, rolled a little bit too far. Ruinen with two in the fourth. Dropkin two in the fifth. Ruinen two more in the sixth. Leads four to three. This is the championship final. Both teams undefeated here coming into the final.
been looking to open that middle up now. Gets them all moving. Really nice shot there. Sends that rock straight back. Disrupts the rocks on the four foot area. Or Joe Polo. Looking just to come down to those rocks in the rings. It's going to get by the top, but it's short. Tough spot there to leave that rock. Now for Ruinen. The opportunity to draw around the other way, try and put another one on top of that pocket there. Looks a lot like the seventh end, or the fifth end going the other way, or going this way uh, two ends ago, where uh, Brunin was left with three counters on the button. Polo asked for the double peel here. Wants to try and remove both those stones. Looks like he was trying to get both. Well, it's possible looking only at one based on the angle. Ruinen looking for the guard to be put back in place. Anders Tapera, new to the lineup this year. Stapera curled last season with Todd Burr, I believe. Formerly skipped a uh, U.S. junior team two years ago. Top level team that uh, went to the World Championships. Call in the end, put that guard back up front.
appeared to be a double peel attempt there, but uh, just slides it across the top, getting only one. It looks like Runon will put that stone back up again. Anything that sort of quarter overlaps the red rock and it also protects the nose of the yellow, just taking a little bit more away from it, will uh, leave this end in a tough spot for Dropkin. to put that guard back up in place. Now that rock did come in a little tight. Question for Dropkin is, do you make a play on this right now? Two stones to come. First of the two skip stones for Corey Dropkin here. Real tough shot here for Dropkin, and even if he does make it, Ruinen's got the chance to put one back in on top again, and I don't know if he's going to get much out of this, to be honest. If he was to hit this right on the nose, he'd probably kick it out into the open a little bit. At best, sit third shot most likely thing that's going to happen here. It's just going to hit half a stone, kind of roll out into the open there, and then Runin can draw one right on top again, and Dropkin will have no way to remove this. Trying to get to the inside as much as possible. You gotta get as much of this as possible or this is just gonna roll out into the open. And this is likely just going to roll all the way out of play here. Yeah, I'm just not sure what Corey was ever going to get out of that shot. As much as you hate still trying to peel and run guards in here, I think there was a play on the top two. Now, unfortunately, though, Ruinen is going to block this off. Any kind of rock that takes away that button will uh, make it real hard for Dropkin to score here.
the call here, a guard. Runin just talking to his sweepers about the options. You know, where do you leave this? This is kind of a line shot here. You just sort of want to get in the way of uh, the pathway to the button. Leave this a little wider if possible. If you can, take it right into the top of the 8-foot. Corey Nurnberger taking the sweep. Just trying to hold this out on that line as long as possible. Now as the speed comes off, Gonna let it finish here. And you see there, there is a little bit of a hole through the middle, and Dropkin could play a, a soft weight shot through the middle, try and hit it, stay in the forefoot. Though it's a very tough shot, and certainly a shot ruining the welcomes uh, Dropkin to try here. Now, the other option Corey Dropkin's looking at, he's got that. Uh, if he could get to the nose of the yellow that you see there on the side of the forefoot, maybe get a little bit of a roll inside. I think there's a consideration as to he might be able to sit shot. Not much space in between there though. The other issue here for Dropkin this being the uh, last rock here in the end. Even if he gives up a single point here, the game is still alive for him. And this is the scenario where as you get higher up in the execution, being down two with hammer is about the same situation as being tied with. So if Dropkin can figure out how to hold Ruin into a single point here, I would consider that a very successful end. So that's certainly got to be something that uh, Dropkin considers with this shot as well. The shot call will be through that port. No real good options here. Everything very difficult for Dropkin. But if he can make something in here, save the end, he'll get a chance in eight to maybe steal this away. If he can get through this port, he's through. The bounce, hold in, and that is just going to roll too far. That will be a steal of three. And they will be kicking them back. That is a final. Rich Ruin and then the old guys take down the Young Bucks. Corey Dropkin and his team out of Duluth. Seven to three winners here in the final of the Gold Line U.S. Open contender. My name is Jerry Gertz of Curling Zone, and I really appreciate everyone tuning in this weekend. It's been great to cover this event for you and uh, bring you these uh, games here today. Of course, this is the uh, first event, I hope, of uh, many. Lots of curling that is still attempted to be played. We've got some events next weekend for sure. The uh, Out in uh, Nova Scotia, we've got a tournament out there, a number of tournaments in Europe. And then uh, hopefully first weekend in October, we'll have the Stu Cells Oakville. We'll be playing that in Kitchener-Waterloo with uh, 12 men's teams, 12 women's teams competing there and uh, try and bring, you with, bring it to you as uh, best we can. Anyways, thanks for your time, and uh, everyone, I hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.